I'd like to talk a little bit today about the passage that we have at, in the Mass this uh, Sunday, the passage from the book of Job. And these are a few thoughts about Job, which is a, a magnificent book. Uh, it's long, 30 odd chapters. Um, it's full of the most fantastic poetry at times and full of interest all the time. Here are a few ideas that I will share with you that I think relate to the actual reading we've got in the Mass this weekend. Because you might say, well, it's all a bit uh, depressing, this. Life is a drudge, and when I go to bed, I, the morning comes too soon, and when I get up, the evening comes too late. It sounds like, um, doesn't sound like a recipe for health and safety in, a, in an age of pandemic. It's there in the Bible. It's there in God's word. And Job, of course, is a story like Jonah, like the book of Jonah, it's a story. It doesn't relate necessarily to a particular person. It's not, it's not the life and times of Job, but it's a story about, to put it in, in uh, the terms of a book I've seen advertised, a Christian book, when bad things happen to good people, how do we respond? At that level, that's one of the levels that we take the book of Job. And the first thing I think it's important to say is to, to note the honesty of the feeling. The, he's not putting on an act and pretending that everything in the garden is rosy. He's not stiffening that upper lip and saying this sort of stuff, I can cope, you know. He's not. He's fed up to the back teeth, and he's admitting it, and he's acknowledging it, and he's saying it in God's presence. He's not putting on a Sunday face for God. He's saying, dear God, this is absolutely awful. W what can we do about it? And, um, and so we have that rather strange but but accurate description of the long days and the long nights and then when you look back they all passed over as quickly as the weaver's shuttle beautiful image isn't it the weaver's shuttle how quickly that goes up and down <clears throat> so what what do we make of it one of the things to know about the book of Job is it's part of what, the Bible, what we call in the Bible the wisdom literature. So it's not history, it's not prophecy, it's wisdom, it's about how to live our lives. And other books in the wisdom camp are the book of Psalms, the Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiasticus, uh, and others. And there is a tendency in the wisdom literature which seems to suggest that if you keep the rules, if you worship the way you're supposed to worship, if you pay your dues, if you follow the law meticulously, then you will be rewarded in this life. And there will be prosperity for you. And the on the other side, your enemies will be punished. And there's a fairly strong strain of that in the wisdom literature. Not only in the wisdom literature, because in our modern world, there is something associated with a certain form of the evangelical approach to religion, which is called the prosperity gospel. And uh, it's alive and kicking in our modern age. 
And anyway, I could say something about that, but not for now. But the basic idea being that you enjoy a materially successful life if you keep faith with God. Now, Job is actually a book written to criticize that notion. Job is a faultless human being. He's beloved by God. He's richly blessed. Yes, indeed. In the first chapter, we see how, how rich and affluent he is. But then he falls on, on desperately hard times. It is a story, so it, everything gets a bit exaggerated. But the end of the, the story, the, the, the point of the story comes in the first chapter where Satan says to God, I, I bet you anything, I can get Job to curse you. You take away all his possessions and I'll get him to curse you. And that's exactly what Job doesn't do. And therefore, the, the story tells us something tremendously important. Oh, too many important things to, to be able to describe in these few minutes. But that ultimately, ultimately, God is God. And God is the Almighty. And he's not a despot, but he is ultimately in control. As Job puts it, uh, as God puts it to Job, you know, you, you don't know, you don't know how the tides work and how far the tides will run up the, the sandy beach. I know that and you never will. So you have to know your place which is a wonderful place, Job, but it's, it's not my place. It's not the place of God. And we recognize that we are, a word that we don't like to use these days, we are creatures. But that's what we are. We are not almighty. We are not all-powerful. We are not in control. And f what we're called to even here in the Old Testament, is to trust, to trust in the ultimate goodness of God. And if we get suffering, this is a huge point in Job, it's not because we deserve it, it's not because we've done something wrong, it's the way it is, and at times we have to cope with it. And we all want answers. We all want, nobody wants to suffer. But the suffering is part of life. And ultimately, the, the passion of Jesus, the life and passion of Jesus will, will give us the ultimate answer about the, the, the reality of suffering, the nature of suffering, ultimately even the purpose of suffering. So Job points us to Jesus and teaches us important lessons about suffering, but teaches us a fundamental lesson in that we have a God who is infinitely to be trusted. And sometimes that takes a bit of believing, dear friends. So I'll leave it there for the time being. We had uh, quite a good number at our early morning session on Mark this morning. I'm speaking to you on Saturday. Thank you for all who uh, participated. I hope you found it useful. And um, there's a note in the current newsletter about the um, about next week, and uh, 
glad to say that 25 people signed in today and uh, there's room for more. So that's St. Mark's Gospel. Next week, there's a, a note about a video by Father Nicholas King, which I recommend. And uh, I, I will have looked at that and will comment a bit on that and other things next Saturday. And the other thing to say is that we have discovered what's gone wrong with the distribution of Magnificat. Uh, won't go into the detail, but we should be able to have the March stroke Holy Week edition uh, available at the end of February. So we're promised anyway. Okay, and um, I think that's it. I hope you have a good week. Uh, you might be dusting down the sledge as I speak. I'm not so sure what when when they promise snow as strongly as they do, well, I won't finish the sentence. Anyway, Father Patrick will be preaching tomorrow at the 11.15 Mass, and we wish you a good, safe, and um, yeah, faithful week ahead, that the Lord will be close and that you will experience that closeness for yourself and for others. Thank you. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.